and so on. And she is going to present a speech called Felicia's Story, which I'm dying to hear from me. It is a project number six of Local Variety. And we know. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters and guests. There's a quote by Dennis Kimbrough that says, life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how we react to it. Today, in honor of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, which October is national, nationally declared Domestic Violence Month, and it's represented by the purple pins and the color purple. So usually for the entire month of October, in honor of my daughter, Felicia Jenkins, I dress down in purple attire. On October 9, 2005, my daughter, my eldest daughter, was murdered by her husband. She had been married for 12 years, and then her husband committed suicide. At the time of her murder, Felicia was a mother, four children, three girls, and one boy. The children were 12, 11, 10, and four. She had stair steps, but she was a mother to the end. She loved her children endlessly. She also was an employee of the state of Florida. She had been employed for eight years. She worked in the child support division and was also a recent graduate. In June of 2005, we shared and celebrated with her as she walked across the stage at FSCJ in obtaining her AA degree, which was one of her goals. She did not go immediately to college after graduating high school, she got married, then the babies came. So that delayed or sidetracked her plans. But she would always say to me, Mom, I want my degree before I get 30. She accomplished that goal. She was the first in our family to get a college degree. So needless to say, we were extremely proud of her accomplishments. I recently had the opportunity to attend the city's Domestic Violence Awareness press conference. And during that press conference, the sheriff shared that domestic violence homicide is a pre preventable crime. And of course that hit home with me to my heart. And you saying it's preventable, but how? How can you prevent it when you don't know what it is? How to recognize domestic violence? The most common form of domestic violence that people normally see is the physical. But in front of you, I have provided you a copy of what's called in our training a power and control will. Domestic violence does involve physical hitting slapping, strangling. It's an ugly, ugly crime. But along with that, there are many, many other means that an abuser may use. Intimidation, coercion, threats. They may also uh, invoke financial abuse, where they limit access to their intimate partner access to their financial funds. It's also a very demeaning crime. This information is provided to you as an awareness tool. And that's what domestic violence means. The Awareness Month is not as popular as our breast cancer awareness with the pink and you know, everybody knows when you see that pink ribbon or you see someone with pink attire that they are, are in the forefront of making it known that I am a breast cancer survivor. 
There are not many domestic violence survivors that will get their pom-poms and say, I am a domestic violence survivor. But today, what I'd like to share with my Toastmaster family is that knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And it may not be in your immediate family. It may be a friend, a neighbor, or a coworker. But if you have the information, then you can help someone else. And as I said, my daughter was 31 years old, murdered at the hands of someone she had committed her life to that she promised to love and honor and be with for the rest of her life. And I'd like to share with you something that we found in her writings. Remember I said she had just graduated college, so she had all these English writings. And in her own words, I'd just like to share this. There's nothing at this point that could change my decision on why I should stay in something I'm not happy with. This unhappiness did not start recently, but the day I said I do. Many things I keep to myself of the struggles I've endured, and I know you all will never know the depth of the pain and anguish he's put me through. I'm to the point where I can no longer pretend that everything is okay. I can no longer smile when physically I'm dying as a person inside. My daughter wrote those words on September 24, 2005, nine days before her husband took her life. So I can relate to Sheriff Rutherford saying domestic violence is a preventable crime. There's so much information today that's available to victims of domestic violence. There's a national coalition against domestic violence. Locally, we have the Hubbard House that provides services and resources to victims who are in these type of situations. I've also provided you a handout. How can someone get out of this situation? The first thing is that they need to tell somebody. My daughter, which I raised her that way, I'm proud to say, she was independent. She did not share with her family the physical struggles she was going through. She shared the financial issues. She put in place with her coworkers, some of her coworkers, a safety plan. If this happens, if I call and I say this word, then you generate or initiate help for me, which is all things that a victim of domestic violence needs to, need to be aware of. Seek help. Call somebody. Let somebody know. Put in place an escape route. So these are all things that victims of domestic violence can do to get out of this situation. And in closing, I'd just like to say as a community, we must continue to take a stand against domestic violence because domestic violence does not discriminate. Rich, poor, wealthy, there's no discrimination. Male, female, children. Our NFL football players recently in Florida, in Bell, Florida, we had a father kill his daughter and his grandchildren. We must let perpetrators know that any intentional or willful violation of our personal freedoms will not be tolerated. We must stop the violence because I can attest to the fact that domestic violence kills. Yay. Very good. Very good.